Welcome to 52 Weeks in the Word. I'm your host, Trillia Newbell, and I'm joined here today by my friend and coworker, Drew Dick. Drew has a master's in theology and is an acquisitions editor at Moody Publishers. You have also written a book, a book that I really thoroughly enjoyed, and it's on self-control called Your Future Self Will Thank You. So the purpose of 52 Weeks in the Word is to encourage people to get in the Word and stay in the Word. And I'd like to add your future self. Well, thank you for getting in the Word and staying in the Word. So here's my question. How do you realistically build habits of Bible reading? And why is it important? Oh, man, that's a great question. And I love the emphasis of this podcast. It's so important. I mean, first of all, just the importance of being in the Word. Um, for a lot of listeners, this probably doesn't need to be emphasized, but for some, I think it does because you think, okay, why do I need to do this on a regular basis, right? Um, why does it have to be something that that is a pattern in my life? And I love the way, I forget who said this, it wasn't original with me, I wish it was, but they said, I don't remember all the meals that I've ever had, but they sustained me, they fed me, right? <laughs> and I think it's it's similar uh, with God's word. Um, it's, you know, when, we, when we're doing it on a continuous Annual basis, uh, it feeds us. And I have to admit, I don't have a lot of patience for people that say, hey, I'm not being fed. You know, someone should be feeding me. Well, you know what? You got the word of God. And it's incredible. In this country, we have access to as many Bibles as we want in all these different formats. Take advantage of that. Make sure you're being fed. Then as far as the, the second part of your question, which was really the first part, which I think is the toughest part, realistically, how do you do this? Because let's be honest, there are a ton of things vying for our time and attention, right? Um, if our life was like sitting in a cabin in the woods on a mountain, wouldn't that be lovely? And we could just bask in the word of God all day, but we got kids and jobs and responsibilities, even sometimes ironically ministry <laughs> that gets in the way, right? And I know of pastors who say, uh, sadly, there have been times when the only time I opened the Bible was to prepare to teach it. And the only time I prayed was to pray in front of people. And we don't want to fall into that trap either, right? And so I'll tell you something that worked for me. Um, I, for the longest time, I wanted to read the Bible uh, every day and not only every day, but first thing, right? Before any of the other voices rushed in, before I got onto email or checked the news, but there was a problem. And that problem was my phone that sat right on my nightstand. And I would roll out of bed first thing in the morning, you know what's coming next. And I'd reach for my phone, like before I was even fully conscious, right? And I had the Bible on my phone. I had a Bible app and I thought, okay, well, I'll start reading my Bible every morning. But then, oh, let me check Twitter first and let me check my email. And then, you know, you're a few emails down and then all of a sudden a kid comes into the room. I have young children. Um, and guess what? I would not get to the Bible and I'd go, well, this afternoon I'll get to it. <laughs> well, you know how that goes because your day gets rolling. And so no matter how good my intentions were the night before, I'd be like, okay, that's it. Tomorrow morning's the morning. I'm going to start with scripture. Well, I didn't realize, but I had actually formed a habit and I won't get into all the, the, you know, geek out on the, the parts of a habit, but just very basically there is the cue, something that triggers the habit. There's the routine. That's the habit itself. And then there's a reward, some sort of payoff. And I realized the cue for me, for my bad habit of using my phone first thing in the morning, was just seeing it on my nightstand there. So to break that habit in my life, what I had to do is get that phone uh, out of reach. And what I did is just move to the other side of the room. And I dragged my big black Bible out of retirement and plunked it down on the nightstand so that instead of reaching for the phone, I was reaching for my Bible. And it sounds like kind of a silly little life hack, and maybe it is, but I'll tell you what, it made a big difference um, in my life. And so I don't know what it is for, you know, every individual, it is going to be different because people have different routines, different schedules, different demands. But if you can really be intentional and go, hey, listen, how can I shape my life and schedule so that reading the Bible will be easy for me so that I'll do it naturally so it'll be part of my day? That is a huge part of winning the battle because uh, let's be honest, reading the Bible is hard, right? It's, it's a big book, 66 books. 
different genres written over um, a couple thousand years and sometimes to dive in, um, especially if you're talking like Leviticus, wherever you are in your journey through it, it can be tough. And so Netflix, I'll be honest, it's more entertaining most of the time. So we have to be intentional about setting up our lives to carve out time to be in God's word. Absolutely. And one of the things that you said that really stood out to me is the motivation. I think I think often we say, well, it's to know God. That's what I would say. Know God. But gosh, I don't know that I have, I, I know I've thought of it, but it is also sustaining. It is what sustains my life. I remember um, having, I've, ha- I've had four miscarriages. And after my second one, I couldn't get myself to barely get out of bed. I was just so depressed and discouraged. And the Lord in his kindness would remind my heart and my mind of Bible verses. So I was laying there unable to just read, but just because of my where my heart was, I was sad. I was very sad. And the Lord call to mind all of these verses, all of these reminders, all of these promises, because I had spent so many years just reading the Bible and, and investing all that nutrient, like, like those, the food, and it sustained me at a time where I needed it. I needed God. I needed to be reminded of who he who he is and who he, who he was, and and I couldn't um, get myself to open the word, but he sustained me. Now, that to me is a real specific personal <laughs> situation, but as you were talking, I thought, if we can remind ourselves that it's, it's about life, it's not just a habit where we check off a box, but goodness, it sustains us. Have you had anything like that where... where You've built this habit now, and now it's it's something that you, when you miss, do you miss going to it? Yeah, right, and and, and full disclosure, I do. I, mi- I mean, as far as uh, I don't always read my Bible first thing in the morning, um, I'm thinking today, yeah, today I did this morning, but it's it's uh, still a struggle. It's not like, oh, yeah, I, I got it fixed, and then every day I just nail it, and every time is is rich and rewarding, but it it's helped, right? And I think you're so right. Sometimes we think of Bible reading just in terms of knowing God and especially in the context of acquiring information, right? So I need to like, oh, learn, you know, more about the Bible, more about God. That's important. But like you said, it sustains us. And when I talk to like, you know, those old saints that have walked with Jesus for decades, when they encounter problems, um, like you were talking about, you go through a crisis, you endure suffering, scripture just tumbles out of them. It's beautiful, right? And, and, and in the face of, of trials and temptations, just like Jesus, you know, when he was tempted in the wilderness, he, he responded to Satan with scripture, right? And so the only way you can do that is if you've been ingesting it uh, for years and years. And then when those trials do come, uh, you're equipped to handle it. It will carry you. Uh, God, through his word, I believe, carries us in those seasons where we can't carry ourselves. So it's essential, whether you're in the dry times in life or good times, um, just having that regular communion with God. And here's another thing, and this kind of ties into self-control, is that when you do have that time with God, I find that it's almost like a keystone habit, they call it, that is valuable not only in and of itself, but exerts a positive influence across the spectrum of your life. So you are more likely to be disciplined in your work. You're more likely to pray. You're more likely to be kind to others. And so it has all kinds of benefits. So I just want to encourage people, whether it's been a struggle in the past, it certainly has been for me, make make the effort to get into God's word. You'll be rewarded richly for it. Mm, Amen to that. And with that, I'm just going to pray real quickly for us as we build this habit. Lord, thank you that we can, by your grace, not because um, we can earn any favor, we already have your favor. Lord, we can build a habit (laughs) of Bible reading because of your kindness. God, thank you that you have given us your word. Lord, may we um, put away all excuses, God. God, help us to daily um, run to you in your word, God. Um, Read to have knowledge of you. We want to know you, but not to know you just for knowledge's sake, but to know you 
on a heart level, God, to know you, to really be in relationship and communion with you. So God, we need your help. We ask you for help to sustain us. God, thank you for your word that does give life, Lord, that helps us in our time of need, that gives us words for praise, um, helps us to know how to better love our neighbor. God, thank you that building habits can also affect the rest of our lives, God, um, that we will build better habits on the, a wide spectrum. Lord, so God, thank you for that grace. It is a grace that we get to um, engage in your word by your power, God. And um, God, I pray that you will help us start and sustain us. Keep us reading. Keep us coming to you. Lord, we worship you. We love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Drew, thank you so much for today. 